With about 88 reservoirs, hundreds of miles of tunnels, many ditches in use, and old forgotten ones, Colorado's water management and diversion system is pretty crazy. So I'm mostly going to talk about water diversion from the west slope to the east slope, and how the front range gets their water. One of the first trans basin water diversion projects was here, on top of Hoosier Pass, where they used ditches to bring water from the west side of the Continental Divide to the east side. This was done in 1929 to supply the placer mine above Alma with water. Meanwhile, on the northern front range, farmers were running out of water in their irrigation ditches and were looking to the western slope for more water. In the 1890s, they started construction of the Grand Ditch, a project that would not be finished till 1936, although the first bit of water was diverted in 1890. The ditch was carved with hand tools and black powder explosives. It is 14.3 miles long and diverts 20 to 40 percent of the water from the Never Summer Mountains over La Powdre Pass into Cache La Powdre River. The ditch is now on Rocky Mountain National Park land, and the park has fought hard not to take so much water. But even before the ditch was finished, lawmakers were already forming plans in their heads for a much bigger project to get water to the east side a giant tunnel right under Rocky Mountain National Park. Now, they needed help from the federal government to fund such a huge project, but the feds were unwilling to supply the funds until Colorado settled the lifelong feud of East versus West. The West Slope didn't want the East to be taking their natural water, and the East, having 80% of the population, but only getting 20% of the snowfall, needed that water. Finally, the West agreed to let the East Slope use the water, it was better that the east got the water and the water stayed in the state than go to the downstream states of California and Arizona. Plus, the west was promised their own water reservoir as part of a project called the Big Thompson Project. The west received Green Mountain Reservoir on the Blue River to hold reserves for western communities. For example, the town of Eagle gets its water from Bush Creek before it goes into the Eagle River and eventually the Colorado River. Now, I don't know the exact number here, but let's say Eagle can only take 15% of the water from the creek, and the rest belongs to the Colorado River. But let's say it's really dry and Eagle needs more, so they take a thousand gallons more than they're allowed to take from the creek. But then they call up Green Mountain Reservoir, which Eagle has partial ownership in, and is way up the river on the Colorado. The Green Mountain Reservoir releases an extra thousand gallons that flows into the Blue River that joins the Colorado near Kremlin and flows many, many miles before it merges with the Eagle River. But that extra thousand is to compensate the Colorado River for the extra thousand it won't get when it passes the Eagle River. The East Slope got a few reservoirs built around Grand Lake on the western side of the divide, from which a 13 mile long tunnel takes water from the west and brings it to the East Slope. The tunnel delivers on average 213,000 acre feet of water a year to the east side. This water is used for the northeastern communities like Fort Collins, Greeley, and Boulder. Other East Slope cities started to buy up water rights on the west side as well. Colorado Springs bought the water rights that were owned by that mine we talked about earlier up on Hoosier Pass. Colorado Springs ditched the ditch and created a tunnel to replace the ditches in 1951. This tunnel goes under Hoosier Pass and a couple other mountains to collect water for the town of Colorado Springs in Montgomery Reservoir. From there it is transferred 70 miles underground to Colorado Springs. Denver also needed water for their growing and thirsty residents. A dam was built over the town of Dillon, and during the Great Depression, the Denver Water Board started buying up land for the price of back taxes, since almost all the residents owed taxes. The town of Dillon was told to move where it is today. Only a few original buildings exist, like the Arapahoe Cafe and the Dillon Community Church, now known as the Schoolhouse Museum. The reservoir was completed in 1963, the 23-mile-long tunnel connecting this lake all the way under the mountains to the Platte River near Fairplay on the other side of the divide and the 916 feet deep access shaft near Montezuma was completed in 1962, 20 years after the boring started. The tunnel on average brings 60,000 acre feet of water to Denver a year, and in case they need to take more, Denver Water also owns Williams Fork Reservoir that runs into the Colorado River. So if they decide to take more from the Blue River, that eventually runs into the Colorado, they'll let more water out at Williams Fork that will eventually run into the Colorado River to compensate for what was taken. The one thing I don't understand is this diversion project, where Denver takes water from above Williams Fork 
on Bobtail Creek on the west side of the divide and runs into the east side above Clear Creek. But instead of letting it run down Clear Creek, they immediately run it under the divide again, back to the west side of the divide near Steamboat Springs. It then winds around some aqueducts till it gets into Steamboat Springs. And then it runs back under the divide to the east side again through Moffat Tunnel. Why all this back and forth? My only guess is for flood mitigation. Well, well, I'm sure they have a reason. I mean, along with 15 reservoirs and a ton of tunnels, Denver Water has got to know what they're doing, right? And that's my quick overview on water in Colorado. If you are a fan of Colorado and the surrounding areas, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel. I upload new videos every other Saturday. If you join the channel as a member, you will get exclusive access to a map of everything awesome in Colorado. You can also support this channel by liking or sharing the videos I make. You can also purchase Colorado merchandise and prints. Link in the description below.